Well, hey, McFly subscribers. So today I'm tying this. Uh, it's a gurgler. Small one, though. Uh, you can see there's my finger. Um, it's not very big. Um, it's for panfish, small bass, something like that. It's a little different. I actually split the tail back here um, to kind of make it look like a frog. So last time I went out, well, about two times ago, <laughs> last time I went out, I went with my son. Um, and had a great time, but the time before that I went out and I actually was fishing, uh, <laughs> like actually putting some effort into it, and I was using a gurgler, a yellow one, and it was working really well, but I was noticing there's a bunch of little tan frogs that are, you know, about this big, yay big in the water, really small little frogs. And I think that's why they were biting it, it mimics a frog, these little gurglers kind of mimic a frog scooting along the water, so... I decided to kind of make my own pattern here, which is what I came up with here, a tan. All right, so I, mean, I have a split tail in the back to kind of look like two legs for a frog similarly in a way, um, but that's that. This is for me, these flies are for me. So if I'm starting with a risen, um, risen hooks. Okay, these are older package by the way, but um, risen hooks is their nymph, barbless nymph hook and yes it is a top water fly and it's a nymph hook um you don't need a dry fly hook in fact you want something a little beefier with these um, but that's a 10 size 10 so that's about right with these um, also i'm using vivas uh six a lot of people say when you're using foam you got to use a flat thread just yes sort of but it's not there's ways to do it with not um flat thread and I like this six odd it's quite strong all right so you want to come to the back and then I've got something called chickaboo here um, it's on a little actually a, a pelt of it's it's soft tackle on chickaboo the whiting um, and this is tan so you could use regular marabou but this chickaboo is really nice it's just basically it's chicken marabou in a way okay so you want to take it take a feather you want to stroke down to get it you know roughly um, and then about the hook gap tied on one side if you're going to do this way you could do just straight in the middle and that's what i did last time it worked great um, still caught fish you don't have to split it so then, so you want to tie it in on one side and then kind of bring your thread around one wrap, two wrap. That'll kind of angle it outward a little bit if you're going to do that route. Otherwise, just tie one or two straight in the center and you're good to go. All right, so there's one. And then you're going to want to do the same thing on the other side. You want to make it the same length. And these feathers kind of have a little curve to them. You want to, if you're going to do this with the split tail kind of thing, um, make it look like little frog legs, then see how that kind of curves outward. You want to encourage that curve to go the direction that you want. Oh, having a little trouble. So you want to do the same thing, kind of tie in the center to split that out like that. You can see. Oh, uh-oh. We all make mistakes here, guys. And there was mine. So I went to pull on this, and that feather broke off. The tip of it broke right off. So now I'm going to redo this, guys. Again, tie-in session, okay? This is not, otherwise I'd be reshooting. This is a tying session. This is not a fly tying like tutorial. All right, so I'm gonna show you all the good and the bad of it. It's just basically coming along with me and watching me tie. I'm gonna tie two of these on video, I believe. So there's one. So 
So when you wet it, you can see it'll come together, but see how that then splits? So in the water, that'll actually split a little better. All right, so just for a little flash here, um, I'm going to take, so this is a midge size. You don't need to go with the midge, you can do regular crystal flash, but I had some of this and figured I'd give it a try. So midge size crystal flash, you want to tie it in just slightly longer than the marabou tail. You can see how that just barely sticks out a little further. Tie it in on, on both sides. There we go. All right. It's light. See if I can position a little better so I'm not hitting it. You want to bring up and back down partially here. About right there is good. Now, I've got this tan foam and I cut it a little longer, you can see, than the hook gap. Okay, you can see the hook gap there. I want it a little longer. I want this pretty wide. Okay. And then you cut a, a notch. I'm going to take a dot of super glue, just a little bit along there. Lay it so that notch is still a little ways away from the hook point, you can see. And bring that down. You want to make sure you come all the way back to where that tail is. But you want to keep that straight at that tail. Um, that's one thing that I notice a lot of people make mistakes on is they have that um, angled right there at the at the tail. It'll be a an angle and then this comes up and it it just doesn't it doesn't lay flat, doesn't lay right. But you really want to bring this back to about where the tail is. And you can come back through. Now I'm using a round thread, so I'm not really putting a lot of tension on this, okay guys? Um, but it's just enough, and that super glue will help keep it together. But it's a, I really like this thread, so um, it's really strong. It's good for these, you could use, and it, it is not overly bulky. Um, now you could use like a flat, you know, uh, thread, but a lot of times those flat threads will be bulky or not strong. Um, some of these others are not super strong stuff. So, um, all right. So next, um, I'm going to do an underbody, and I'm going to use Starburst dubbing, which is from. Um, it's basically the same thing as Ice Dub, uh, but it's Fly Tires Dungeon, and it's less expensive. Um, I like a lot of their uh, the Fly Tires Dungeon stuff. Um, they've got good quality stuff at cheap prices. I mean, you know, basically it's like a it's a nice dub. That's all it is. And this is the they call it light orange, but um, it's sort of, but it, it, it kind of matches this tan really well. So that's about the closest match I could find to the color. So it doesn't have to be exact. Light keeps getting in my way. Sorry, guys. You just want to form an underbody just so it kind of covers up. You want to come up mostly to the head. You can see here I'm not quite all the way to the head. Okay. I don't like how that split. That didn't really turn out as well as I wanted. Sorry, the last one, the tail split. Heck of a lot better. Um, messed up. All right, and then I like using a lot of super glue on this fly just because it really. A lot of little sunfish will will hit it, um, and bass. Well, bass are actually in the sunfish family, uh, but they'll hit it, and they, you know they're just aggressive little little things and teeth, and they just destroy flies. So if you can do everything you can to keep them good. All right, so quite a few. Um, you know, start uh, not super tight, but then kind of tighten as you go. And see how I've got a little bit of space here 
at the um, at the eye. Okay, and that's what you want. Let's see if I can get a little more light in here, guys. Um, and um, but we're gonna come back just a little bit. We're gonna make like a little space. See how I came back a little? Okay. The reason why we're doing that is we're gonna put some rubber legs. Now, I have a bag full of junk. <laughs> All right, so I, I mean, I, I pull out, I've got multiple different bags, um, smaller bags and one big bag. And you know, this is all the like synthetic materials like foam and, and um, rubber legs and, and flash and stuff that I have little pieces left. Um, I've also got um, bags with, you know, feathers that I've used some, some feathers, um, but not all of them like basically just the tip of it or partially and I'm not you know I'm not I'm finished tying and and then I've got different bags with different color CDC because I make my own CDC dubbing um, so I've got that um, and I just pull out when I'm tying for myself I just pull out this is are you serious hold on guys sorry guys children so anyway, I pulled out this little um, piece of rubber leg that I had some extra of, and it'll work perfectly for this. So I'm doubling it over. In fact, I could probably tie two with that. That's a pretty big piece, so I'm gonna cut that in half. I'm gonna double that piece over. There we go. And I like the front part of it. You can see how I've got the front part a little bit longer. Oh, I'm going to show you a little better on here. Yeah, you know, the front part's a little longer than the back part. Okay, so I'm sorry, the front part's a little shorter, the back part's a little longer. So I'm just going to tie it in accordingly that way. So the loop, see how I made a loop with it, doubled it over. Doesn't have to be exact, we are going to cut it. So two. Two turns, cut the top, pull to one side, pull to the other, you're good to go. Now, that kind of helps keep it separated a little bit, having that space, you can see the space there, otherwise this would um, want to come together and they'd end up, you know, basically, I mean, they're still coming together, but they'd be like that. Um, but this helps you add one more step uh, first. Here's another piece of scrap that I had. So it's a scrap piece of foam. I'm gonna lay that on top, which I didn't do for the other one. And I thought, hey, you know what? I'd like a, I remember last time I was having trouble seeing um, even the yellow is actually more of a gold color. Um, but this is a brighter yellow. I have a feeling I'll really have trouble seeing the tan. So I'm adding myself a little bit of a hot spot there. Get a little more of this ice dub, or whatever dubbing you're using. Um, you could go less shiny than ice dub if you wanted. All right, and then you just go in between. When you do, that's gonna, you'll see, it'll separate out those legs a little bit more, which is good. All right, and then final step is you pull this up and bring everything out of the eye that you can and just build up a larger head. And what you're doing is you're helping to raise this piece of foam a little bit more. It'll kind of create more of like a popper action, um, spit water kind of, that's really what these are for. All right, and then on flies like this, so see if I can show you without messing this up. On the back here, I've got this little knob Okay, um, this is a uh, Renzetti vise, and I pull out enough, and I just lay that. You're not going to see from here, but I lay the thread on that part of the vise, and then I can use two hands to whip finish. And I come in, I pull everything up out of the way, make a five or six turn whip finish, seat that knot. Cut close, and now you can see how that's raised up now. 
because I put a thread dam under there and that basically just raised it up. So that'll ensure that that stays angled upward. And then you want to cut this off. And where I'm cutting is I'm going to leave, you know, about like that. Okay, you can see here, um, you want a little bit of space in front, but not too much. So there you go. And you can leave it like that. I like rounding the corners. It's really simple. Um, you just basically cut off at an angle like this and like that. And now you've got a rounded corners just to make everything stay. I, I like super glue on these things. Um, just a little dot here. Make sure you don't cover the eye. Okay. You just want to cover that little knot. Um, I like doing a little here to keep those rubber legs from moving. Also, you'll see a trick in a second. So on both of those, you can pull the rubber legs. It'll kind of help keep them angled, right? Like that. So, so then I cut the front leg to right about where, like that. So it is even with the top of the Uh, fly here and then these I cut so it would be even to the back Roughly I'm a little short on that, but that's okay and That one's a little longer Try to make them about as even as possible And there you go and that's That fly which I didn't do a great job on let's let's tie one more um, But this is this is a great little little pattern for bass and sunfish and stuff. I really do like it. So back with another risen hook. And by the way, guys, you guys get discounts. Okay. Um, just being my subscriber, they've, uh, they've offered a discount to everyone, 15% off. Just type in McFly at checkout. They have great rods and reels and, um, hooks and some other fly time material. Got really good price on beads, by the way, if you guys like, um, um, cone heads or um, brass or even tungsten beads they sell all that so oh. every once in a while you get a feather that just kind of looks a little funky just make sure they're decent quality feathers um, they can be bent see how this one's all bent that's okay um, just bent make that bend go outward Can you give me a minute, guys? All right. So. It's kind of nice on like this one, you can use those bent feathers. Um, there's a lot of feathers on these pelts that are bent. I mean, not a lot, but there are some, and there's not many flies you can use them with, so. I'm sorry, guys, I'm watching my kids today, like most every day. What, Abby? I'm really sorry, guys. My kids, um, it's like 10 stops already trying to tie two flies. Ugh. All right. So let's get that one to sit out a little further. There we go. All right, that split. There we go. Look at that split. That's what we're wanting. Sorry, I messed up on that last one. So. As not to waste. This is a leftover of that last midge, the last one that I used with the midge um, flash. And it looks like it'll come out perfect. Yep, it's perfect. Clean all this up. So that 
should be enough. Yep. If you ever have a piece that you're unsure of, you just want double. If you've got about double what the hook shank is, then you're good, which that is. So if you're unsure if it's going to be enough with this fly, you know you've got enough with double. A little shorter than double, actually, is fine. I'm not sure if you heard that, but <laughs> I live right by a, a um, fire station, so it's nonstop all the time, all day long. All right, that's about right. Turn that, make sure that's straight. Again, like I said in the last time, you want to make sure that's straight. All right, so let's clean all this up a little bit. Come back. All right, dub it up. This light in the way just makes it tough. All right, a little bit more dubbing there. Excuse me, my kid is yelling at me, so um, this has been a really tough time tying. I'm sorry, guys. My kids have been tough today. I probably should have chosen a different day, I guess, to tie, but it is what it is. It's kind of my only day right now. So give me a minute. I'll be right back. All righty. Oh. Da the super glue. Again, you want to leave a little space at the eye. All right. And then, and by the way, on that tie, you want to try to keep it straight. If you have it angled, um, this is going to be off to the right. Um, you just want to keep that as straight as possible. And then just, whoop. again, build a a space in between. Double up that rubber leg. If you have a shorter piece, make sure it's um, thinner at front. Only two. If you do more than two, it's hard to get them over. Like this. This would be hard to do this. They would break if you did more than two wraps, so it would just be too tight. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add a piece here. Oh, that was not straight. That's a trick with tying in these uh, the foam, is you got to make sure that the foam is straight. Now see, I leave a longer tag at the end, so you can see it better, it sticks up better. Um, everything will flatten down a little bit when you put in the, the dubbing, but again, I'm using a fair amount here just to be able to spread those out. Sometimes that doesn't, you got to help these legs a little bit sometimes. Okay, so that's spread out. And again, pull up, pull everything out of the way of the eye. Build a little dam there in front of the eye. That trick with the whip finish. Pull it tight. Now, I came over the eye a little bit with that whip finish, so if you ever do that, 
You can take your fingernails, if you've got any, and just pinch behind the eye while pulling back, and that should, while seating it, and that should be able to pull that up out of the way of the eye, yep. Now, this is, um, this dubbing is really a messy dubbing, which is good, um, in a way. But sometimes a little bit gets over the eye, and that's okay, as long as you don't super glue that into there, you'll be able to still get a, uh, a thread in. All right. Oh, sorry, not the thread, the, um, the line, your tippet. All right. It's a little long. Go. The, cutting those uh, the tips off is just for aesthetic purposes. It's not no reason to do it. You'll still catch fish without doing that. Fish don't care. You know, fly fishing is kind of all about confidence. I've noticed that some days I can go out and I do everything right, but I'm not feeling very confident. I don't catch very many fish, but other days I might do a bunch of things wrong, but I feel all confident about it. And um, I'm not catching fish, so. Just rounding the corners, little things like that, when I do something to a fly, just makes me feel a little better about it. And again, it boosts up that confidence. So in a way, could it help you catch fish? Probably. Does that have to do with the fish? No, it's probably to do with you. Let's see if those are even. They're pretty even. There we go. There's another one. That's that. So that's all I'm going to tie today, guys. Um, sometimes I tie multiple. Um, I think all I need is, I had already tied one, so all I need is three of them for this next trip that I've got coming. I don't lose very many. So three should be good for this next trip. And, and this one, I have different rubber legs, again, because I'm, I'm using scrap. So, um, so we'll see which one works better. Uh, got multiple different, you know, pieces of foam and stuff in there. It's just, it's nice. So if you guys ever do that, like you're tying and you have little, I, I probably won't keep like this feather. Um, there's just not a whole lot of use for that unless you want like um, dubbing or something. You could use that a little bit for dubbing, I guess. Um, but I, I, I just don't have any use for it, so I don't keep that. But let me pull it out. I'll show you guys what I mean. So, um, so for instance, feathers. Sometimes I'm using just the tip of the feather or um, like here. And see, I just use the tip of the feather, but this will still work as a, this is kind of good for a soft tackle. Okay, so uh, it's a little big, but a larger soft tackle. Um, if I was uh, tying some, you know, uh, streamer collars or whatever, um, this will work. And so why throw this away? I have use for this later in the future. Um, just doesn't have the tip. Don't toss that. Keep it. Um, stuff like that, you know. Uh, see, I've got... Oops. Hmm. It's hard to kind of look through this stuff, but this is actually a full piece. Oh, and I was using, so that's what I was doing. I was using this piece as tailing material. Um, so I was ripping off the back um, as tails for mayflies. And, but I've got an entire piece here. So now I've got good hackle almost most of the way. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear that. That's my daughter screaming in the background. Anyway, um, so when you, you know, see I've got, I've still got a couple pieces of this foam. That's going to go right in the scrap pile. And um, then you, you know, you've got stuff to, you know, with me, I tie so much, you know, I sell flies and all that. I've got so much and I, I try to tie a lot of my flies as much as I can. I pull from the scrap pile so I'm not using my other materials. And, um, yeah, so if, I, if I've got it, right, I might as well use it. 
pieces of flash, little rubber legs, whatever it may be. So, yeah. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I can't wait to go use these. I'll bring you guys along. You guys can see, catch some fish with them. And I think, I think they'll work. Um, they really do mimic those little, I mean, they're small little um, uh, frogs and they just, um, they're plentiful. They're everywhere. I mean, you step anywhere, they're hopping, hundreds of them hopping out, out of the way. So I know that the fish are eating them. And uh, they, you know, the last time I fished this pattern, like I said, it was yellow, um, or more kind of like a gold color. It worked really well. And I think uh, this tan is going to even be better. Oh, this one's a little crooked. I didn't do so good with that one. This one's better. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. You guys let me know if you like this pattern, what you think, um, and if you fish it. Uh, I know a lot of you have fished the um, regular size gurgler, a little bit bigger. Okay, so that's a great fly for bass. Um, this is too. This will catch bass. Um, it'll, it'll catch uh, panfish as well. Thing is, it's a little smaller, so these panfish, you know, they can't fit a big giant gurgler in their mouth, but they can this. So um, go ahead and uh, give this a try. Go, go tell me and let me know how, how you do with these or if you've done well. Let me know in the comment section what you think. Um, also, like I said, go check out Risen. They do uh, have some really, really um, quality stuff at good prices. I mean, that's the deal is they're really good prices. And they have really good customer service and, and a lifetime warranty on their rods, which is really unheard of for a discount company like them. Um, and I call them discount company just because they're really inexpensive, but they're not. I mean, it's high quality stuff. Everything they have is really, really high quality. They just don't charge you an arm and a leg for it. So go check them out. Also, guys, um, I'm sure you've seen, I do have uh, some uh, merchandise that is always at the bottom of the, the videos. You can go check that out. I have it through Teespring. That's who I sell through. It's just a little easier on my end, so I don't have to hold a lot of stuff. They do it for me. They do it all for me, but I do get proceeds from that, so it helps out the channel. Plus, you get some really cool stuff. So, t-shirts, hats, um, you know, they've got stickers on there that, I, that you can buy. Uh, you can buy even some, I've done some photography and posted up some prints. So, if you ever want that, they'll put it on canvas and you can hang it up, uh, um, you know, in your workstation or whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, so go check that out. Um, really, really uh, helps the channel. So again, it's through Teespring, that is mine. It's at the bottom of every video. And I've got links in the description section for it. Plus I've got links uh, to Risen and I've got links to all the materials I use on all the flies. Every single one of my, my, my flies, I, I link all the materials that I've used, uh, whether it's through Risen or uh, wherever else you can get it. A lot of Amazon links and some of the Amazon links I do make some money on, by the way. So it does help me if you buy through there. Um, first and foremost, try to check it out at your uh, local fly shop. But if you can't, especially with COVID going on right now, um, some of you don't want to go to the fly shop and I get that. So, um, you got other alternatives. So, well, anyway, guys, thanks for coming along. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.